Screen Directors Playhouse stars Rosalind Russell, Jeff Chandler. Production, Hired Wife. Director, William Siter. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. The cigarette that brings you Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Tonight, the Screen Director's Playhouse is pleased to present a comedy for springtime. Here is our adaptation of The Perils of a Private Secretary, Hired Wife. And here are our stars, Rosalind Russell and Jeff Chandler. Jeff and I are playing the part of boss and secretary. I'm Kendall Browning. And I'm Stephen Dexter. Cement is my business. And it's always business. With all New York to choose from, I had to fall for a man with a head full of cement. <laughs> I draw your attention to my private secretary. She has horn-rimmed glasses and a poised pencil. She also has a deep conviction that businessmen are just big little boys. She puts lollipops in my cigar box. <laughs> That's Kendall Browning. Now here's Chesterfield's answer to Cyrano de Bergerac, Bob Hope. I'd top you easy, Dad, but we only have a minute here to sell Chesterfield. Okay, well, let's get to it. Better-tasting Chesterfield is the only cigarette that combines for you mildness with no unpleasant aftertaste. Mm, the mildness is a cinch to prove. You just make the Chesterfield mildness test. You know, open a pack and enjoy that milder aroma. Then smoke them, and you'll know that Chesterfields are milder. And Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. That fact has been confirmed by the country's first and only cigarette taste panel. So make our cigarette your cigarette. The reasons go together like this. Why, Chesterfield, Chesterfield, the one that proves its case. Yes, Chesterfields are milder, milder, plus no aftertaste. Oh, ho, open a pack and give them a sniff, then you'll smoke them. Now for the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Hired Wife, starring Rosalind Russell as Kendall Browning and Jeff Chandler as Stephen Dexter. You'll notice that once again, spring has happened. This phenomenon is accompanied by certain changes among the birds, the bees, the flowers, and a private secretary named Kendall Brown. Oh, it's not really me, Mr. Wallington. It's my boss, Stephen Dexter, of Dexter Cement. Something happens to Stephen when the snow disappears, I know. The first spring I worked for him, he made a pass at me and I put him in his place. That's where I made my first mistake. He stayed there. <laughs> The second spring, uh, I made a pass at him, but a redhead got there first. So uh, take it from me, girls. Don't try to make love to a cement mixer. You end up with sand in your eyes, rocks in your head, and your heart in a sling. Anyway, here we go again. It's open season on Steve Dexter, and I've got my gun loaded. It's been loaded for so long, my powder's getting moldy. <laughs> spring. <laughs> Morning, William. Morning, Miss Kendall. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful spring day? I've seen better springs on a secondhand mattress. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice the lovely breeze? A breeze is nothing but an undeveloped sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Kendall? Aren't you happy? Now, just tell me one thing. Did Mr. Dexter arrive yet? Oh, yes. He came in singing. Singing? Well, I'll bet it was the funeral march in the key of Kendall Browning. <laughs> Even my wife noticed the weather. She says now that it's spring, I'll feel primitive, savage urges. 
<laughs> and you know what? What? She put an extra jam sandwich in my lunch. <laughs> well, don't let the lettuce go to your head. <laughs> now, just type these reports, William. I'm going to have a talk with Mr. Dexter. Yes, Miss Brown. Ah, good morning, Kendall. Lovely day, isn't it? Here, I'll open the window. Thanks. Now hold my pencil and I'll jump. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Oh, nothing, Stephen. It's just that every spring it gets thick. What gets thick? My blood and your head. <laughs> Fine. Now, do you mind if we get down to business? I'm ready. Oh, have you received an answer to your bid on the subway job? We've got the contract. Oh, Stephen, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Just one hitch, though. General Cement Corporation. Ah, that bunch of cutthroats. Roger Van Horn told I me that I know what he said. That's what I pay a lawyer for. Oh. They'll try every trick they know to get the contract away from Let us. Let them try. I'll stick to our cement as if it was glue. Stop worrying, Kendall. Come on, enjoy the spring. Oh, the trouble with you is you've got too much jam in your sandwiches. Huh? <laughs> Never mind. Oh, who's the bathing suit in the advertising layout? Oh, Phyllis, she's my new idea for an ad campaign. Isn't she a vision of blonde loveliness? I knew it. Just your type. Blonde, blushing, and blousy. <laughs> she happens to be a very talented model. I can see that. If she had any more talent, she'd burst her Catalina. <laughs> <laughs> well, get used to her. She's going to be our new trademark. Isn't that nice? Little Annie Cement. <laughs> Who is she? Her name's Phyllis Walton. But someday it may be Dexter. Sure, sure. Her name will be Dexter and yours will be Mud. Are you thinking of marrying that bleached peach? Now, stop it, Kendall. She'll be here soon to discuss a contract. You show her in immediately. Now, where on earth did you ever dig her up? I happened to see her in an automobile advertisement. Oh, and you were fascinated by the rumble seat. <laughs> I was fascinated by the, the, the advertising prospects. Oh, come, come. What we need is a warm human campaign, something with sex in it. I get it. The cement you love to touch. <laughs> I want my cement to have personality. Sure, sure, like perfume. Chanel number clunk. <laughs> That'll be all, Kendall. You're my secretary, you know, not my partner. I know. Okay, boss. And show Miss Walton in immediately. Phyllis Walden. I got a good mind to toss her right out on her pneumatic drill. <laughs> yes? Phyllis Walden is here, Miss Brown. Oh, tell her that Mr. Dexter will see her right... No. No, William. Uh, send her in here to me. Ah, spring. I'll probably hate myself for this in the fall. <laughs> Are you Stephen's secretary? I'm, uh, Kendall Browning, Stephen's private secretary. Uh, there's a difference, you know. Uh, what's the difference? Uh, well, with one you get notebooks, with the other you get nylons. <laughs> oh, really? Let me see your legs. Uh, oh, my. You're just made for the cement business, aren't you? And uh, what business are you in? Inner tubes? <laughs> I happen to be Phyllis Walden, the model. Oh, oh, yes. Miss Cement Bag of 1951. <laughs> I have got bad news for you. Oh? Mr. Dexter was going to put you on his cement bags. What? Uh, as a model, I mean, for advertising. Yes, go on. Well, uh, the deal is off. Mr. Dexter changed his mind just before he left for Chicago. Chicago? What did he go there for? Same old thing. Visit his eight children. <laughs> children? I didn't even know he was married. Oh, oh, yes. He's been married so often he uses old wedding rings to fix leaky faucets. <laughs> But, but, but didn't he say anything else about me? He wanted me to advertise some dam he was building. Uh, well, now, if you really want to know, he's changed his mind. He says he doesn't give a girl for that dam. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
I, I, I can't believe it. Uh-huh. He said, now let's see, what did he say? Oh, yes. He said, tell Miss Goofy Pan she can't peddle her kisser to Steve Dexter. What? Uh-huh. That's what he said. Oh, Kendall, is Miss Walton here? Uh, oh, Phyllis, darling. Oh, uh, pardon me while I go out and darn a few doilies. <laughs> yeah, Stephen, that was a fast trip to Chicago. Uh, Chicago? What about Chicago? I've got no business in Chicago. Only eight kids. If it wasn't business, it sure couldn't have been pleasure. <laughs> Kendall, what's this all about? Uh, now, 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 Stephen, don't get yourself excited. I'll explain everything just as soon as you're finished with Miss Parax. Uh, I mean, Miss Walden. <laughs> Kendall, why do you do these things? Miss Walden was so upset, she sobbed her heart out. Now, was that what fell on the floor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, for a minute, I thought somebody dropped the cash register. <laughs> Telling Phyllis those wild stories. Well, now, it was for your own good, Stephen. Every spring, your young man's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of, of man traps. You plant those tender romances. They're warmed by the summer sun. They grow, and by harvest time, you've got yourself a nice batch of lawsuits. Phyllis happens to be a lady. So is Tokyo Rose, and she's still in jail. <laughs> Kendall, you're my strong right hand. I can't run this business without you, but stop fiddling in my private affairs. All right, all right, you can have Phyllis. And while she fiddles, brother, you'll be smelling something burning. Your bank account. Phil hey, hey, uh, that was a good one. Hit him again, and... See if you can draw blood. Oh, hello, Roger. Come on in, Roger. I can use a good lawyer. My, my, isn't it a lovely spring day out? Yes, yes, isn't it? Why don't you take Stephen to the zoo and give monkeys indigestion? <laughs> the brain like yours, you wouldn't have to buy any peanuts. Now, look, look, look. You kiddies really want to fight. I suggest you save it for a bigger scrap. Oh, what's that, Roger? General Cement. Oh. They're gnashing their teeth over losing that uh, subway contract. Oh, let them gnash. We've got it sewed up. They're talking awfully tough, boy. And they're holding a board meeting this afternoon. Latimer wants us to be there. Why do we care what he wants? I've got a hunch they might try to pull something dirty. So, we go. Don't worry, Roger. That strong right hand of yours is going to make like a fist. <laughs> Dexter, we're bringing an injunction against you the first thing in the morning. It's a technicality. It's a trick. My lawyer will have it lifted in 24 hours. We'll tie up every penny you own, Dexter. Every cent. By the time you pry our injunction loose, you'll have lost the subway contract. Now, that's unfair. Of course it is. But it's legal. Now, you remember this. The victory is not to the strong alone. No, but that's the way to bet. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, oh Stephen. <laughs> Well, take a good last look at the office. Stephen Dexter Cement Company's on the way out. You better take home a few sacks. I hear they make good tents. <laughs> now, please, Roger, there must be something we can do. There's something I'd like to do. <laughs> All right, William, you're excused. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to help. I've got a few thousand dollars. Oh, thank and... you, William, but... I'm afraid we'd need more than a few thousand. Oh. Well, if you need mine, it'll take a few days. It's in my wife's name, and Snookums gives it to me a dime at a time. <laughs> ah, that's the trouble with signing everything over to your wife. You, you haven't got it. A... <laughs> oh. <laughs> Stephen, that's it. What's it? You've got to get married. Huh? Well, it's the only way to protect your money, marry. Oh, swell. You promise to love, honor, and collect 3% interest. I'll put every last penny in your wife's name. Every sack of cement, even your house, you'll have to... The... You mean the only way I can save my business is to give it away? Oh, it'll just be a formality. See, after a few weeks, you can get a divorce. Stephen, huh? I was just thinking. All you have to do is find a girl you can trust. Someone who understands your problem. Someone close to you. Kendall. Kendall, you're right, and you know who she is. Oh, Stephen. Uh, come on, now. You, you have to be married tonight, and you can't do that in New York. But you, Let's see, you'll have to fly to Charleston. Oh, well, I'll have to go home and change my clothes. Why? For the trip. Oh, sorry, we won't need any bridesmaids. Bridesmaids? <laughs> Whom are you going to marry? Well, whom do you think? Phyllis Walden. Ah, oh, there's bad news tonight. <laughs> 
Uh, let's get busy. I'll make a list of all my property. Here, Roger, you drop the transfer papers. Right. Miss Collins, get two reservations on the next plane for Charleston. And, Kendall, you go ask Phyllis Walden to marry me. What? Well, you can't expect me to go. I'm too busy. Well, what do you want me to do? Drag her here by the hair of her phony eyelashes? <laughs> Please, Kendall, I need your help. You don't need me. You need Dorothy Dix. Now, look, Kendall. Kendall, you're a woman. Oh, you're just making that up. <laughs> how to talk to another woman. You'll explain to her. Yes, yeah, sure, sure. Yes. Yeah. Sure, sure, I'll explain to her. No matter what you now take for headache relief, we urge you to try Anison for the incredibly fast relief these tablets bring the next time you're suffering from a headache. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take Anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison, A N A C I N. Anison at any drug counter in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. And now the second act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Hired Wife, starring Rosalind Russell and Jeff Chandler. Hello, it's you, Brownie. I'm working my way through college. Do you want to buy a cement mixer? <laughs> You'll find the elevator shaft down the hall. Why don't you just drop in? Oh, the hope it is. Mr. Dexter sent me. Well, come on in. I'm just dressing. My, you have a stunning figure. Stunning? Just like a blackjack. <laughs> really? And yours, my dear, looks like it was weaned on rye crisp. <laughs> Charming, charming. Shall we go round again? Come on, get on with it, Browning. Your lies are so corny, they're fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> this one will kill you. <laughs> Mr. Dexter wants you to marry him tonight. He does? Well, hush my mouth. I'd love to. <laughs> well, I don't know whether to say yes. Well, why don't you stand on your constitutional rights and just mumble? <laughs> look, what kind of a gag is this? Now, look, Walden, I'm not batting for Cupid. This is strictly business. Whose business? Your business. This can put you within spending distance of some very serious sugar. <laughs> I'm listening. Go on. Oh, uh, well, uh, mm, Stephen and all his money will be waiting for you at the airport at 5 o'clock. Flying to Chicago again, I presume. No, no, Charleston. Oh, I've never been married in Charleston. No. <laughs> really, Browning, you must think I'm an awful dope. Well, I'm just telling you... You'd love to go back to Stephen and say that Walden number has a price tag, but I'm not that kind of a girl. Go ahead, kid. Work yourself up. Well, you can tell him I'd love to marry him tonight, but my trousseau's in the laundry. Just like you, Walden, all washed up. <laughs> Phyllis. Roger, what's happened to that girl? Now, will you stop having pups? You can count on Kendall. It's a great girl. If I weren't paying two alimonies already, she could have me. <laughs> you? I happen to appeal to masterful women. Oh, that's Kendall, all right. Never understand why she never took up weightlifting. <laughs> She'll have Phyllis here any minute. Sure hope she's the right girl for you, Steve. Oh, certainly she's right. Why shouldn't she be? Oh, she could make it kind of gruesome for you, controlling all your assets. Why, if Phyllis wanted to, she could take everything. 
And there you'd be, poverty-stricken, miserable, groveling, destitute, emaciated, penniless wretch. Here, take this dime for a cup of coffee. <laughs> no, keep it. Look, Roger, I happen to be of sound mind, Steve. and I... Uh, oh, Steve! There, there's Kenzie. Yeah, but where's Phyllis? Phyllis isn't with her. Oh, Steve! Steve! Phyllis said no. You mean she wouldn't come? Not for love and not for money. Well, there goes my business. You want that dime now? Oh, no. Now, you mustn't blame her too much, Stephen. After all, no woman wants to get married just as a favor. Except me. <laughs> Finished. Everything gone. Steve, you haven't lost it yet. You can still marry someone. Yes, but who? Who? Well, don't look at me. I can't cook. <laughs> Stephen, you've got to get married tonight. It doesn't matter who, as long as she's a girl you can trust. Any girl. Uh, look, Steve... Now, what girl have you trusted more than any other girl in the world? My mother. <laughs> Steve! Steve, look at her. Don't you know a wife when you see one? You mean Kendall? But well, maybe she's busy tonight. <laughs> well, I really had planned on reading another chapter of Little Women. <laughs> I, I wouldn't marry her if she was the last girl in the world. You foolish boy. I am. <laughs> Ask her, Stephen. Go ahead, propose. No, 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 not till he apologizes for that last crash. Southbound flight six, now departing. For Pete's sake, Steve, apologize. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Well, now ask me to marry you. Propose, Stephen. Tell me what every girl wants to hear. Kendall, will you marry me until all this blows over? <laughs> Some proposal. I've had better offers from the milkman. <laughs> okay. I'll do it. I now pronounce you man and bank account. <laughs> we'll have to hurry, Kendall. Well, come on, husband. In memory of this deliriously happy moment, I think I'll kick Roger right in the shin. Oh, 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 oh. happy landings. I'll be waiting with the papers. Now, right in here, Kendall. <clears throat> uh, are you uh, Judge Peabody? I have that honor, sir. D.L.B. Peabody. Dudley LeBlanc Peabody. <laughs> Who's suing who? Uh, well, uh, we want to be married. Raise your right hand. No, but all we want is... Do you always swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you, Hannah? I, I do. do. Congratulations. You just bought a turnip patch. <laughs> $5 an acre, please. But and you've got your signals crossed, Dudley. All we want is a simple wedding. Ma'am, our weddings is so simple, they're more like funerals. <laughs> Just love a nice funeral. Yes, sir. Which one of you is the bereaved? Oh, brother, somebody's been putting gin in your chitlins. <laughs> <laughs> Look, now we're here for the wedding. Whose wedding? Our wedding. Congratulations. How long you've been married? <laughs> we're here to get married by you. Now get the witnesses. Don't need none. I'll sign the license twice. Now you get witnesses or I'll tie knots in your Mason Dixon line. <laughs> You're a card, ma'am. Necking in the waiting room will be a dollar extra. <laughs> and I think this is what I've waited a lifetime for. It's not a very nice way to be married, is it, Kendall? Well, it can't be helped, Stephen. We'll make up for it. You're a pretty fine person. You should have known me when I was a Girl Scout. <laughs> I won't forget this, Kendall. Neither will I. It'll keep me awake nights. <laughs> Be right in. Yes, sir. Are you two prepared to take the step? Yes, yes, we are. Another wedding <laughs> makes me cry. Oh, because you're sentimental? Because I hate to see two more lives ruined. <laughs> Why don't you forget the whole thing and go and take a Turkish bath? <laughs> I, I want to be married Okay, okay, join hands and prepare to be split asunder Thank you, thank you That woman you got there, she's a troublesome one How can you tell? Narrow eyes Never trust her with money no. <laughs> For your information, I am to be entrusted with all his money That right, mister? Well, yes I was right the first time. This here is a funeral. <laughs> now join hands and get stabbed in the back. <laughs> join hands! Home again.
and home again all the same day. Yeah, we'll just go in and sign a few papers. Oh, aren't you going to carry me across the threshold? What's the matter? Are you tired? <laughs> Skip it, Sir Walter. Well, 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 the bride and groom return. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. It was a lovely wedding. Next time I should break a leg. I uh, couldn't find the rice, so I got out a box of cornflakes to throw at you. Well, go ahead and throw them. I ate them while I was waiting. Uh, uh, Roger, did you bring those papers with you? Oh, yeah, yeah, right here. Where do I sign? Uh, on this line. Uh -huh, that does it. And now you, Candle? Ah, fine. Well, congratulations, Stevie boy. You're broke. <laughs> this afternoon, a husband. Tonight, a proud pauper. <laughs> Thanks for your help. Oh, well, don't mention it. And if there's anything you need, Stephen, <laughs> just ask your wife. <laughs> Fine friend. He didn't even kiss the kissless bride. Well, you, you're not really a bride. I know, I'm just a legal maneuver. <laughs> You'll raise a family of little affidavits. <laughs> oh, you're a real friend, Kendall, and I... Well, thank you for marrying me. Sure, any old time. <laughs> oh, Stephen, let's not kid about it. I know it's just a business arrangement, but it is marriage. I'm glad I didn't know it was going to be like this. Kendall... Yes, Stephen. All right now. I, suddenly, I, I'm rather glad I married you. No, no. No, don't. Why not? You're my wife. Not because you wanted me. I'm not a wife. I'm a substitute for Phyllis Walden. She'd be here now if I hadn't... Hadn't what? Well, if I hadn't made her refuse your bid. My bid? Yes, uh, the way I put it. I knew she turned me down. No one likes to admit she's for sale, even if she is. You mean you treated her in my name as if she were a cheap desk? Oh, she isn't cheap. I'll say that for her. Why, you... you uh, 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 Stephen, I've got the money. You double-crossing little... No, 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 don't say it or I'll wash your mouth out with hundred-dollar bills. Stop trying to act so confounded married. Well, that's me, taking advantage of a technicality like a little old marriage license. Now, go, go home. Get out of my house. Your house? <laughs> Oh, oh I, I suppose you'll hang those legal papers over my head I'll club you silly with them All right, all right, if it's a fight you want, you'll get it Stephen, darling, keep this up and I'll cut your bubblegum money Are you going? Yes, and in the meantime, don't get any cigarette burns on my rug Kendall! Uh, yes, Stephen? You're fired! Yes play will continue in just a moment, but first, here's a word from RCA Victor. Soon another baseball season will be underway, and it promises to be the biggest and the best yet. It's the 75th anniversary of the National League and the 50th anniversary of the American circuit, and these milestones attest to the enduring enjoyment we derive from our national pastime. It's the American way, baseball today. So get out to the park as often as you can. When you can't be at the game in person, do the next best thing. Root for your favorite team on RCA Victor Million Proof Television. Its quality is proven in over two million homes. That one word, quality, explains why RCA Victor is America's most owned television. See your RCA Victor dealer soon. And while you're there, order your copy of a truly unusual RCA Victor record, Fran Warren's recording session. Only 25 cents with the purchase of any one of the 27 great records in the RCA Victor's new Singer's Single Series. You 
are listening to the Screen Directors Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's All-Star Festival, brought to you by Chesterfield, the only cigarette that gives you mildness, plus no unpleasant aftertaste, the best cigarette for you to smoke, by the makers of Anison for the fast relief of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia, and by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. The Screen Directors Playhouse presentation of Hired Wife, starring Rosalind Russell and Jeff Chandler, We'll continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue with the third act of Hired Wife, starring Rosalind Russell as Kendall Browning and Jeff Chandler as Stephen Dexter. Yes? Uh, Kendall, it's me, Stephen. Ah. Oh. What is it, Stephen? Well, I... I thought over what I said last night. I'm sorry. You mean you thought over what you did when you signed over all your possessions to me? Well, today's Sunday, and I thought we could spend a pleasant morning talking things over. Mm -hmm. Start talking. Well, uh, can I have money for breakfast? (laughs) Read it, bum, or I'll call a cop. Please, Kendall. Make it fast. I'm cooking. Well, you, you just can't treat a husband this way, that's all. Oh, no? Uh, tell me, husband, do you see this frying pan? Uh, are you going to put eggs in it? No, I'm going to hit you on the head with it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> that's the bride's wedding gift. The, Kendall! Kendall! Kendall, wait till I get you in the office tomorrow. Good morning, William. Morning. Where are you going? To my office. Oh, you can't go in there. The boss is busy. <laughs> the boss? Mrs. Dexter. She's taken over the business. Oh, well, we'll see about that. <laughs> she said for me to throw you out. <laughs> well, let me see you try. Oh, yes, Mr. Dexter. Enough, Mr. Dexter. <laughs> what, what, what happened? You just don't have enough jam in your sandwich. <laughs> Will you, uh, I, I'm going in that door. It's locked. But well, it can't be locked. See, she can't do this. Kendall! Kendall, I, I'll get in there if it takes me. Well, well, Mr. Dexter. Back again. Oh, how how long can this go on? I've been here every day this week and she wouldn't see me. But this is Friday. I'm getting in. Mr. Dexter, what are you hiding behind your back? This. Mr. Dexter, put down that axe. Stand aside. Uh, All right, all right. But there's something you ought to know. Out of my way. tried to tell you. Your wife's out to lunch. Did she leave any message? Yes. 
She said you would have all the money in the petty cash box for meals. Food. Food at last. <laughs> How much is there? One dime, two Lincoln pennies, and a three-cent stick. <laughs> Fine lawyer you are. Don't complain. I saved your business, didn't I? Oh, sure. Two words from you and I'm bankrupt. Something go wrong? It's Kendall. She's thrown me out. Maybe you don't treat her the way a wife ought to be treated. Well, I've tried, but I can't get close enough to kick her. <laughs> That's not what I mean. Have you tried being affectionate? Affectionate? With that water cooler? <laughs> Try it. She just wants a little romantic attention. You go in there and I'll be right over. All right. I'll try it. I'll walk in there and say, Kendall, I want to talk to you. Kendall, I want to talk to you. <laughs> well, write me a letter. Preferably from Lower Slavobia. <laughs> I, I can't go on any longer. How can I see you like this every day, cold, detached, unemotional? What is it you want? Oh, I want something to put my arms around and love. Try the hat rack. <laughs> Don't you understand, Kendall? I, I'm on fire. I'm burning. Oh, go suck a cube of ice. <laughs> Why do you act like this? Well, isn't this the way you wanted it? Yes, at first, but... Now I know you're more than a secretary. You're, you're what I want, a woman, soft and fresh and tender. You don't want a woman. You want a Ruba, baby. <laughs> you don't want a woman. You want a Ruta Baker. <laughs> Kendall, Kendall, don't you see... Yes, I... Well, I, I think I do. Oh, you're desirable. You, you should be loved and kissed. Stephen, what's happened to you? Kissed like, like this. Oh! Stephen, I just dropped by to... Oh, how nice. Uh, oh, Phyllis! Well, uh, what's new in the woodwork, Walden? <laughs> A fine thing, kissing your secretary right on her desk. She, she's not my secretary anymore. Did you fire her? Worse, he married me. Married? Mm -hmm. Is this true, Stephen? Well, I, I couldn't help it. I, I had to marry her. Had to? <laughs> oh, Browning, you poor girl. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> as soon as we found out, we went and got hitched. <laughs> I didn't want to do it, Phyllis, but it's the law. They forced me. You mean you'd leave that girl in her condition? What condition? <laughs> Stephen, I have to have carrots. I feel just like guys go get me carrots. <laughs> that condition. Look, Phyllis, I wanted you to be in Kendall's place. It just didn't work out that way. <laughs> My wife means nothing to me. She's just a financial arrangement. Ah, well, what about our little dividend? <laughs> and don't tell me it's a loan from the RFC. It was you I wanted, Phyllis, right from the start. Well, you can start now and take her with you. Ha! I wouldn't have him if you served him on a silver platter with an apple in his mouth. Goodbye. <laughs> She's gone. Well, what are you waiting for? Here's a nickel for the apple. <laughs> now, beat it. Hello, kiddies. I uh, think I just passed a jet bomber on the way out. Yeah, and did you notice the tailspin? <laughs> Roger? Yes? R Roger? <laughs> I I'm not going on with this any longer. Oh, yes, you are. And it's going to get worse. 
Someone tip Latimer of General Cement that your marriage isn't bona fide. It isn't. It's an optical illusion. Well, if they can prove that, we're sunk. And they're bound to check up on you. So, Candle, you go home and start packing. Good, good. Ship her away. Yeah. Preferably to lower Slobovia. <laughs> away nothing. Now, we have to make this marriage look good. She's moving to your house. My house? My house? Naturally, your house, your house. Would I move to Roger's house, Roger's house? <laughs> well, I won't do it. I refuse to permit it. Think of the position it puts me in, a married woman living in my home. <laughs> the neighbors will talk. Just nail the marriage license to the door and keep the window shades down. <laughs> no, 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 this, this is asking too much. Ah, yes, we Dexters prefer death to dishonor. What about me? What will I tell my husband? Not you, the good one I'm going to marry next. Oh, for the last time, I will not take this viper to my bosom. Your bosom. Ha! That looks like the inside of a parenthesis. <laughs> all right, all right. Very well, prudes. I'll see you in bankruptcy court. Bankruptcy? Now, look, look. If you're going to be scaredy cats, invite some respectable relative or friend to stay at your house and referee. Ah, now that's an idea. Roger? Oh, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Oh, no, no, you don't want me. Oh, yes, we do. I've got long toenails. I'll tear up the sheets. <laughs> no, no, no. Now, Roger, you're respectable enough. Not since that last lawyer's convention in Chicago. No, no, please. I'm... Some more of Stephen's stuff, Roger. Put it on the bed. You all uh, moved into his room? Mm hmm. All settled away. I hope he enjoys the guest room with you. By the way, do you snore? I used to sleep next to the elevated railway until the passengers complained. <laughs> Good. I'm glad to hear it. He can plug his ears with cement. Well, we'd better hurry if we're going to make that movie. Unless, uh,. You want to spend the evening with Stephen? I'd just as soon spend it with Dodo, the dog face boy. <laughs> Honestly, Phyllis, the, the whole thing's a misunderstanding. Well, no, not on the phone. Say, uh, Candle. Shh, shh, shh. Well, why can't we talk it over here, my place, tonight? No, we'll be alone. Nobody to bother us. Just you and I. Roger. Yes? How would you like to take in that movie alone? Well, how come? Oh, I think I'll just spend a nice, quiet evening at home. Oh, Phyllis, I, I'm so glad you could come. Well, you've got a lot of explaining to do. Oh, before the evening is over, darling, we'll be just like we used to be. Now, give me your coat. I'll put it up in my bedroom. Thank you, Stephen. Hello, darling. Kendall! Get out of that bed. Did you say something, Stephen? I, I said, uh, you better keep your coat on, Phyllis. It's, uh, it's chilly, you know. Oh, but I'm warm. Well, don't complain. It's a lot warmer for me than it is for you. Well, you're, you're white as a sheet. Well, sheet, she, she, don't say that word. Why? Well, it makes me think of snow blindness. There I was in the Arctic. No fire, no matches. No sleeping bag. Oh, that's the trouble. The bag is sleeping right now. <laughs> Stephen, I don't understand you Well, that's the way it goes Some do and some don't It's been fun, Phyllis Let's do it again sometime Good night Oh, Stephen, are you coming to bed, darling? Stephen, I hear a woman Are you sure there's nobody else in this house? Nobody but you and me And us chickens <laughs> There is somebody here I knew it That's just the neighbors They're all wife beaters They have a wonderful time Well, we'll see about that no. I can't look. Well, open your eyes, Stephen. What are you afraid of? There's nobody here. There isn't? This is all very strange, Stephen. I'll have to consider it carefully. Good night, Stephen. Uh, uh, good night, Phyllis. Ken, the window. Help me in, Stephen. I don't think I will. What are you doing? I... Well, it's going to close again. I think it's Latimer out here, checking up on us. 
Well, now listen, you she monster. What's the idea of a. Latimer? Latimer. Well, come inside, darling. Imagine you out there catching your death of cold. <laughs> it should only happen. <laughs> now, now we'll just pull down the blind. Now, what's the idea of lousing me up with Phyllis? One more peep out of you, and I'll yell for Latimer. <laughs> Very well, but this can last only so long. Surely, another 40 or 50 years, and it'll all be over. Now, you just go off to bed, Stevie boy, because this is only the beginning. <laughs> Roger, can't you stop that snoring? Huh. Oh, oh, Mabel, cut it out. <laughs> Roger! This ought to wake you up. Uh, Roger, old man, how about a drink? Easy on the soda. <laughs> look, look, this is my home. Why do I have to sleep with you? Huh? Oh, 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 oh. Well, because I'm... I told you the shop room. Well, I- I'm leaving. I'm checking out. No, no, no. Wait a minute. No, you don't. No, you don't. You tell me here's a shop room, and I intend to shop my head off. <laughs> now, now, see here, Roger. I... Hmm. Uh, answer the phone, Mabel. Oh. Stephen, answer the phone. You answer it. It's your house. Oh, answer it yourself, you lazy oaf. Must be an easier way. Maybe the Foreign Legion. Oh, hello. Who is it? I'm trying to find out. Hello. Hello, Dexter. Yeah. yeah. Who's this? Let me speak to Mrs. Dexter. Who? That woman you're supposed to be married to. Oh, oh, her. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Kendall, I think it's Latimer. Oh, well, here. Hold the receiver so I can hear too. Hello. Is this Mrs. Dexter? Yes, Mrs. Stephen Dexter. What proof do you have? Well, come on around. I'll show you my bruises. You should... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is Latimer of General Cement. Oh, hello. And what can we do for you? Well, frankly, Mrs. Dexter, my associates and I seem to have made a mistake. We doubted that you and your husband were really living together. Oh, we're living all right. Yes. Well, you beat our injunction. We're ready to make a deal. Well, my husband will call you in the morning. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? We did it. Well, Stephen, it's wonderful. I'm so glad. Oh, so am I. Now I can get a divorce. <laughs> Is that all you can think of? Well, I'm just a dreamer. You certainly are, because I'm not going to give you a divorce. That's a good girl. I. You... What do you mean you're not going to give me a divorce? Well, I suddenly decided that I like being Mrs. Stephen Dexter, that's all. Good night. But, but I, I want a divorce. Well, whistle for it. Oh, 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 my toe. You slammed the door on my toe. Hey, hey. What are you doing out of bed? Answering the phone. Oh, my toe. Well, next time, try answering with your hand. <laughs> you might like to know that was Latimer who called. Oh, uh... Checking up, eh? Mm Mm-hmm. And we have him bamboozled. Yeah, we'll never count your bamboozles before they're hatched. (laughs) Oh, this one's already hatched. We're making a deal. Oh, we we beat him, huh? Yep, and now I want a divorce. Oh, right now, or should we wait until morning? The sooner the better. Now, how long will it take? Is, uh, Kendall willing? In a pig's ear, she's willing. Well, if she fights... And she will. It'll take years. Years? Well, five at least. Your best bet is to disappear and be given up for dead. You're stuck with me. Oh, I am, am I? Stephen, what are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to make the best of things. Come here, wife. Uh, uh, now, Stephen, now you stop trying to act so, 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 so married. That's me, <laughs> taking advantage of a technicality like a little old marriage license. Stephen, I know what you've got in your mind, and... I wish I didn't. So, you, you like being Mrs. Stephen Dexter. Well, I, I, I thought I, I did. Stand I, still, Mrs. Dexter. Now, you lay a hand on me and I'll tell Senator Keefover. 
I'm going to shower you with all the kisses a wife deserves. Stephen, don't, don't, don't. Steve, Steve, don't. Stephen, I wish you'd make up your mind. Roger, how can I get rid of this woman? Well, not that way, old boy. <laughs> Can't you think of something? With all this going on, all I can think of is Mabel. <laughs> out to be. Why don't you protect me? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get an annulment? Annulment? Yes, the most beautiful word in the English language. How long would it take? Oh, a few weeks. We'll just have to show it's been no marriage. It hasn't, has it? <laughs> no, no marriage, no nothing. Fine. <laughs> Let's keep it that way. Oh, you can testify to that. Well, I'll start proceedings tomorrow. Providing... Providing what? Providing you come to bed fairly soon. Nighty <laughs> night, kiddies. Remember, no knives. Well, Kendall, that closes the book. I guess it does. Give up? I'm going home, Stephen. No hurry. Just stand outside. I'll throw your bags out the window. <laughs> now you won't have to listen to Roger snore. Mm -mm, I'll get a good night's sleep in my own room. Never mind my things. I'll call for them in the morning. Good night, Stephen. <laughs> Oh, breakfast. Good morning, Roger. Isn't it a lovely morning for an annulment? Good morning, Cad. <laughs> oh, you're grumpy. Didn't you sleep well? How could I sleep while you were in your room, annulling your annulment? What are you talking about? I did sleep in your room last night, didn't you? I did. Cad? Well, maybe you'd have slept better if you'd done what I did last night. <laughs> the way you say that makes my blood run cold. <laughs> I took a nice warm shower and went right to sleep. And you expect them to believe that in court? Well, certainly I expect them to believe it. Kendall might tell a different story. Kendall wasn't even here. She went home. She did? She did. I wish I could believe that. Oh, there. there that's probably her now. Come to pick up her clothes. Now, I'll prove what I said was the truth. Good morning, Stephen. Uh, come on in, Kendall. Just having breakfast. I was talking to Roger here. <laughs> Can you beat it? He says our marriage can't be annulled because he thinks you were in my room last night. <laughs> he does? <laughs> Oh, he does. <laughs> well, isn't that a scream? <laughs> he still doesn't know for sure, does he? <laughs> uh, oh. Kendall, where were you last night? I went home and stayed there. A bold-faced lie if I ever heard one. <laughs> oh, he was pretty bold, all right. <laughs> Tell me, Stephen, did you like my new nightgown? I didn't see any nightgown. <laughs> that does it absolutely no Darn door. Phyllis! Steve here, I thought it all over and I... Well, what's she doing here? Eating breakfast with my husband. Here, have a bagel. <laughs> Stephen, is this woman living in your house? Kendall wasn't really here last night. Oh, his hair looks so tousled when he wakes up. I call him my little tousled pomade. <laughs> Kendall, you stop that. Phyllis, you have to believe me. Oh, you never give up, do you? No, I don't. All right, Stephen. I do. I don't bother explaining. He's all yours, Walton. And for your information, Roger, I did spend the night at home. There goes the best secretary a man ever had. That adding machine? She happens to be my wife. Stevie boy, are you sure you aren't in love with Kendall? Roger. Roger, I've been deserted. My wife walked out on me. I can't imagine why. <laughs> you big dope. You've been crazy about her all along. Good Lord, I, I am in love with her. Well, go bring her back. What about you? Oh, uh, I'll find something to amuse me. Now, wait a minute. Stop staring at me. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh, dear, huh? His name is... His name is Roger Van Horn. I don't care about his name. What's his credit rating? Oh, Kendall, Kendall. Don't shout, dear. Here I am behind the door. 
Kendall, how could I ever let you go? Poor Stephen. You never had a chance. Kendall, will you marry me? But we're already married. Oh, oh yeah. Hello. Uh, hey, there must be something we can do. Uh, let's go back and kick Roger right out of the house. Roger? But he's our chaperone. Oh, Stephen, darling. Those days are gone forever. <laughs> Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Directors Playhouse will present the beautiful screen play, Humoresque. And our stars will be Tallulah Bankhead and Stephen Cochran. On April 26th, we are pleased to present Jackpot, starring Miss Margaret Truman and Jimmy Stewart. Now, here again are tonight's stars, Rosalind Russell and Jeff Chandler. Take a letter. Oh, still the businesswoman, eh, Roz? No, no, just a grateful actress. So address the letter to the director of Hired Wife and say, Dear Bill, for all you've done in the cause of comedy, in so many pictures, and in this one we made together, my deepest thanks. And if I can express my admiration too, Roz, I'll take that letter in person. Ladies and gentlemen, may we introduce the director of Hired Wife. And of such grand pictures as Affairs of Susan and One Touch of Venus. Mr. William Siter. Thank you, Roz, Jeff. But there's something I have to say. This show tonight was awfully discouraging. Uh-oh. We did something wrong. It's nothing like that. But a director has a right to be discouraged when he's worried about all the things the director worries about to make a picture. And then he hears the same story, beautifully done on the air. And there's nothing to worry about because he doesn't have any of the worries a director usually worries about. In other words, Bill, you're trying to say... I'm worried. I think Bill means he's disappointed because he created all the characters in front of a camera. And there's nothing left for him to do in front of a microphone. Except to say thank you, Roz, Jeff, everyone, and good night. Good night, Bill. Good night. Hired Wife was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Studio. Now releasing Bill Malden's Up Front, starring David Wayne and Tom Ewell. Rosalind Russell's newest picture, the independent production Teach Me to Love, will soon be released. Jeff Chandler can soon be seen in Smuggler's Island, a Universal International Technicolor production co-starring Evelyn Keyes. William Siter's latest picture is the Paramount production Dear Brat. Included in tonight's cast were Mary Jane Croft, Jim Backus, Robert North, Ken Christie, and Earl Ross. Hired Wife was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons from the screenplay by George Beck. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley and directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen next week when we present Humoresque, starring Tallulah Bankhead and Stephen Cochran with screen director Gene Nicolesco. Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, the Thursday night feature on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening to the one and only Duffy's Tavern, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Tomorrow for good fun, it's William Bendix in the life of Riley on NBC. NBC.